This video is based on data from nuclearpower.com, which is a powerful source of information on physics and energy. In this video, we will describe laminar flow, its definition, main characteristics of laminar flow, Reynolds number, and finally pressure losses in laminar flows. Let's start with the definition. Laminar flow is a type of fluid flow, which is characterized by smooth or regular paths of particles of the fluid. Laminar flow is also referred to as streamline or viscous flow. This type of flow occurs typically at lower speeds and the fluid tends to flow without lateral mixing. When a fluid is flowing through a closed channel such as a pipe or between two flat plates, either of two types of flow, laminar flow or turbulent flow, may occur depending on the velocity, viscosity of the fluid, and the size of the pipe. Laminar flow tends to occur at lower velocities and high viscosity. On the other hand, the turbulent flow tends to occur at higher velocities and low viscosity. As was said, laminar flow is characterized by smooth or regular paths of particles of the fluid where fluid particles move in straight lines. This is in contrast to turbulent flow, which is characterized by the irregular movement of particles of the fluid. The fluid flows in parallel layers with minimal lateral mixing, with no disruption between the layers. There are no cross currents perpendicular to the direction of flow, nor eddies or swirls of fluids. Therefore the laminar flow is also referred to as streamline or viscous flow. Due to viscous effects, the flow velocity profile for laminar flow in circular pipes is parabolic in shape. Laminar flow is not common in industrial processes. This is because the laminar flow is common only in cases in which the flow channel is relatively small, the fluid is moving slowly, and its viscosity is relatively high. Most industrial flows, especially those in nuclear engineering, are turbulent. Nevertheless, laminar flow occurs at any Reynolds number near solid boundaries in a thin layer adjacent to the surface. This layer is usually referred to as the laminar sublayer and is very important in heat transfer. In contrast to turbulent flows, laminar flows can be modeled analytically. Let's look at our car body, which is placed in a wind tunnel. Here the car body is held stationary, and the air moves around it. Vapor trails show the airflow over the car body. In this case, the air flows at a very low speed over a car body. The flow is said to be laminar or streamlined. In a wind tunnel, the air moves over a stationary object, such as a car body, to model the car's movement through the air. This is a valid model, as the relative speed of the air and the object determines the flow pattern. In laminar flow, the air moves in layers, with the layer of air next to the car body being stationary and the velocity of the layers increasing away from the car body. The drag force is caused by the resistance of the air to layers sliding past each other. More viscous air has a greater resistance to relative motion and exerts a bigger drag force. The drag force is proportional to the speed of the car relative to the air. The transition from laminar flow to turbulent occurs at speed known as the critical velocity. Turbulent flow causes much more drag than laminar flow. When it comes to laminar flow, we must also define the Reynolds number, which is, is one of the characteristic numbers used for predicting whether a flow condition will be laminar or turbulent. The type of flow occurring in a fluid in a channel is important in fluid dynamics problems and subsequently affects heat and mass transfer in fluid systems. The Reynolds number represents the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces, as you can see in the formula. It is about how fast the fluid is moving relative to how viscous it is, irrespective of the scale of the fluid system. The Reynolds number is calculated using mean velocity, 
characteristic diameter, fluid density, and dynamic viscosity. It is valid for any fluid. The characteristic diameter or length will depend on the type of flow we are analyzing. So that the Reynolds number is also dependent upon the geometry of the analyzed flow. The Reynolds number at which the flow becomes turbulent is called the critical Reynolds number. We must note, the value of the critical Reynolds number is different for different geometries. For flow in pipes, if the Reynolds number is less than 2000, the flow is laminar. For flow over a flat plate, the generally accepted value of the critical Reynolds number is 500,000. Let's calculate the Reynolds number in a specific case. In this example, we will calculate the Reynolds number for the water flow in a circular pipe with a diameter of 10 centimeters. The flow velocity is 0.02 meters per second, and the dynamic viscosity for water at 20 degrees Celsius is 0.001 pascal seconds. Using the formula, the resulting Reynolds number for this type of flow is 2000, so that the flow is most probably laminar, but it is very close to the transition flow. For laminar flow in pipes, the flow velocity profile is parabolic in shape. This velocity profile will indicate maximum velocity at the center of the flow and minimum at a solid boundary. In some cases, a special assumption, known as the no-slip condition, can be applied. The no-slip condition for viscous fluids assumes that at a solid boundary, the fluid will have zero velocity relative to the boundary. At the fluid-solid interface, the force of attraction between the fluid particles and solid particles can be greater than that between the fluid particles. This force imbalance may bring down the fluid velocity to zero. As with most of the engineering approximations, the no-slip condition does not always hold in reality. The velocity profile in turbulent flow governed by the pressure gradient is flatter in the central part of the pipe than in laminar flow. The flow velocity drops rapidly close to the walls. This is because turbulence introduces a lot of mixing between the different layers of the flow, and this momentum transfer tends to homogenize the flow velocity across the pipe. In the case of turbulent pipe flow, there are many empirical velocity profiles. The simplest and the best known is the power law velocity profile. Also, in some cases of turbulent flows, the no-slip condition may be assumed. In the practical analysis of piping systems, the quantity of most importance is the pressure loss due to viscous effects along the length of the system, as well as additional pressure losses arising from other technological equipment like valves, elbows, piping entrances, fittings, and tees. The most common equation used to calculate major pressure losses in a tube or duct is the Darcy-Weisbach equation. In fluid dynamics, the Darcy-Weisbach equation is a phenomenological equation, which relates the major loss, or pressure loss, due to fluid friction along a given length of pipe to the average velocity. This equation is valid for fully developed, steady, incompressible single-phase flow. The most common method to determine a friction factor for turbulent flow is to use the Moody diagram. The Moody diagram, also known as the Moody chart, is a log-log plot of the Colebrook correlation that relates the Darcy friction factor, Reynolds number, and the relative roughness for fully developed flow in a circular pipe. The Moody chart can be divided into two regimes of flow, laminar and turbulent. For the laminar flow regime, roughness has no discernible effect, and the friction factor decreases as the Reynolds number increases. It is only a function of the Reynolds number, so we get the straight line on the Moody diagram. For transition region and especially for turbulent region, we have to select the curve corresponding to the relative roughness of the pipe, and then we get the friction factor for the given Reynolds number. As can be seen from the Moody diagram, the pressure loss for laminar flow is proportional to velocity rather than velocity squared. Thus the friction factor is inversely proportional to velocity. For practical purposes, 
if the Reynolds number is less than 2000, the Darcy friction factor for laminar flow is a consequence of Poiseuille's law that is given by the following equation. For circular pipes, the friction factor can be directly calculated. For non-circular pipes, it depends on the cross-section of the pipe. For example, let's calculate friction losses that occur in pipe flow due to the effect of the fluid's viscosity near the surface of the pipe. In this example, we will assume similar calculation inputs as in the previous example. But in this case, we will assume the flow velocity to be 0.01 meters per second. The resulting Reynolds number for the water flow in a circular pipe with a diameter of 10 centimeters, where the dynamic viscosity for water at 20 degrees Celsius is 0.001 pascal seconds, is 1000. Using the Moody diagram, we determine the friction factor to be 0.064. Using the Darcy-Weisbach equation, we determine the resulting pressure loss to be 0.32 pascals for a 10 meter long pipe. Now, we will show a few examples of typical laminar flow in real life. Viscous fluids such as honey and syrups exhibit laminar flow in the best possible way. They have very high viscosity and a very low Reynolds number so that the flow is very laminar. When such fluids are poured into a container, the flow seems undisturbed and constant. This is because the layers of the viscous fluids do not merge with each other easily and stay separated from each other. Another example is the flow of air over an aircraft wing. If you measure the airspeed within an inch of the wing surface, you'll find that the airflow slows down. As you reach the surface of your wing, the airflow's speed drops to zero. The area where friction slows down the airflow is called the boundary layer. The boundary layer is a very thin sheet of air lying over the surface of the wing. Because air has viscosity, this layer of air tends to adhere to the wing. As the wing moves forward through the air, the boundary layer at first flows smoothly over the streamlined shape of the airfoil. Here, the flow is laminar, and the boundary layer is a laminar layer. The laminar flow of air is an essential requirement to ensure a smooth flight. A major application of laminar flow can be seen in fountains. This is because the ordered and continuous flow of water through the fountain outlets provides a crystal look to the stream of water. A laminar jet is a type of fountain head nozzle designed to give a constant clear glass-like jet of water. Laminar nozzles work by straightening turbulent water molecules, thus improving the transparency of the jet. We hope you have gained an insight into the laminar flow. If you want to know more, visit nuclearpower.com and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.